Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern. We will have a Time for Change call tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Uh, there's a lot of information that uh, we're going to go into. And we have a special reverse aging health call this Friday at 9 p.m. Uh, we're going to introduce to you a lady that has been through the ropes with the uh, dark forces and who has developed a uh, phenomenal nutrient, uh, discovered it actually, that has the opportunity to end all starvation on the planet. And she has a whole uh, structured um, synergistic grouping uh, surrounded about through this technology. And I, we will have her and Dr. Russ, some of you are familiar with him, uh, and we will have an introduction. Uh, she will then explain much, and uh, then he'll have uh, time to explain much, and then we'll go into a Q&A. So I highly recommend that people be there. Yeah, it's interesting. We, we are constantly, all of us are learning, challenging. And when you're challenged, you know, it's, there, there's a lot of things that um, come to you. And, and even though you're, you're meditating, even though you're, you're knowledgeable, okay, you know uh, to stay in the now and you know and to be in silence, it still sometimes becomes very challenging to stay in that position. Every intention that we have, every intention sets energy into motion. Every little thing it does, it, it can be just minute, whether we're conscious of it or not. And each and every moment of our lives, we are creating something 24-7. Our magical minds are always inventing, designing, devising, and magnetically manifesting the circumstances, challenging situations, and the types of people in our lives. So we, believe it or not, we create, when we're in situations where we, things happen, right? And we, we got to go, where'd that come from? We create it. And it doesn't have to be consciously. But we think it's some external force, but we create it. And I know to some that's hard to swallow because I've talked to some people about that and they say, I don't know about that. What most of us, unfortunately, are completely unconscious of our natural moving energy into form, creating a reality and, and experiencing it's, that's manifesting. Our powers are, are, are omnipotent. We simply live our lives thinking that everything is coincidental. And we know there's no such thing as coincidence. That's a word that we created to explain things away that we don't understand. So everything is, is, is coincidental and randomly occurring to us. And the truth couldn't be more radically opposite and outrageously different. Deep down inside, all of us are the inventors of our entire reality. That's a lot to swallow. This is in this meditation is to contemplate that and to understand it for ourselves and who and what we are. We are the inventors of our entire reality. We are like an unending movie projector that is constantly playing out the films scrolling inside. Whatever film we watch is what we end up attracting and creating more of in our lives. 
no matter what it is. You, you could be experiencing the worst of the worst, and in, in that frequency, in that mode, you continue to tr attract the worst of the worst. We are unstoppable manifesting machines. That could not, we, we, we don't have the we, we we cannot stop manifesting even if we wanted to it, it's just it's what we are it's part of what we are whether we are manifesting what we want or what we don't want doesn't matter depends on how conscious we are in this moment in this now it also depends on the frequency of our vibration. And that's huge. And that is ultimately determined by your level of consciousness. Can you imagine yourselves in a, in a situation, we've all been in them, that's just, you're like, you're getting hit from all sides. And, and you're, in the, you're in the middle. And, and everything's coming at you from every direction. And of course, it's obvious, it's automatic that our, our frequency drops because we get frustrated, irritated, angry, stressed. But instead of that, in the middle of that, all of that coming at you, through the heart mind, you make the statement to yourself, I am of the highest and deepest, deepest, deepest gratitude of right now and for everything that's happening to me and with me. Now that takes a lot, but it shifts the vibrational frequency. And all of those things that come at you, that are coming at you nonstop, fade, and everything shifts. And it can shift, and this is another thing, it can shift in a blink of the eye. No matter how bad it may be, no matter what the situation is, it can shift in a blink of the eye. What we, what we will manifest tomorrow stems from what we are experiencing right now. Our futures are impacted by the sum total of all the thoughts, feelings, and experiences we've had up until today. All the things our father, mother, siblings, friends, coworkers, and bosses have said to us throughout our lives are still inside us like data on a computer chip what we do with this information in this moment is what will determine the level of energy that we vibrate at and the experiences we will manifest in the future perhaps one of the most important pieces of information to digest here is the knowing that we always have the power always infinity to create any interpretation of reality we want at any time at any time we can change our lives around by simply shifting how we perceive those lives our words are the greatest power we have the words we choose to use establish the life we experience Sonia Crookett. In each moment, we have the choice, all of us do, to shape shift our reality. We can consciously increase our manifesting abilities and start vibrating at a higher energy level just by deciding that we're going to do this. We don't need to know how it's going to happen. We don't need to know where we're going to learn the secrets to doing it. We simply need to choose to make the resolute commitment inside ourselves. This is a secret to changing everything. The more we trust in this experience, the more we naturally begin reprogramming our bodies and minds with inspirational, loving, and high vibrational thoughts and emotions that alter our experience of this life. Positive experiences in this life naturally arise 
through following a daily, some kind of manifesting routine, a daily manifesting routine, and a combination of meditation, intention, and physical activity that supports our being and tapping into our natural manifesting powers. It's, it's actually moving into the habit. Whenever any of our minds dwell on intensely and with firm resolve, that is exactly what we become. I mean, it's, and I emphasize it a lot because it's so darn important for us to understand and finally grasp this. It's like the mind turned inwards is the self turned outwards. It becomes the ego and all the world, Ramana Marishi. We, all of us, in, in each moment, in each now, in each microsecond of this life, we have the choice to respond to life from a completely new, alive, and freeing space that is born in the now. Or we all can react from an older, unconscious, conditioned pattern that stems from a past story. The choice is always ours and each second if we respond from a fresh place of freedom or from past conditioning. And the type of story that we are talking about is not that enjoyable fantasy fairy tale story that we all enjoy listening to around the campfire. It's that one that we drag around like an old ball and chain attached to a heavily shielded yet wounded heart. The infamous, infamous victim story is one most of us know all too well. It's the one that is fixated on how another wronged us or how we, were, we are struggling with money or unable to find the love of our lives or create the career we really want, whatever it may be. We often unconsciously believe that by repeating the story over and over, it will help us to escape it, transcend it, or feel better about our poor, lonely, victimized selves. And what really happens is that by repeating what we don't want to manifest in our lives, we simply become more wrapped up in the ego's illusions of being trapped, helpless, and powerless. But the good news is that we always have the power to transcend our stories if and when we can become conscious enough to see who or what is truly creating it. It's good to know that all of our stories were created by some life event, big or small, that actually happened. The event naturally occurred, then the mind took over, and invented its special, specific, positive, or negative meaning on top of the actual event. So all of us, the archangels, ascended masters, all that there is, invite you to take this entire week to write down and notice all the stories you tend to repeat in your mind and add to other people. This is a very powerful, life-changing exercise. Notice if they are positive or negative thoughts. And who would you be without any of these stories? These stories stick because something happened in our lives that our minds judged as wrong or absolutely always right and found some sort of peace within that perception. However, when we hold on to any thought or idea about life too tightly, attachment, we become overly attached and miss this amazing universe that's happening now. Attachment always leads to some future suffering. Doesn't matter what attachment it is. 
And it's always our choice if we want to be free and manifest more of amazing goodies or be stuck with the same old small tune. It's like everything that's happening on this planet. We, collectively, all of us, whether we attune to it, whether we identify it, are doing it. We're creating everything. Keeping a story from our past alive takes a lot of work and will drain all of our energy. It will keep us living in the illusion and never awaken to the divinity within our being. The illusionary mind loves to create stories about stories. Heck, you may right now, any of us, be creating a story about this exploration of stories. The reality is, is that we are not this mind, nor our egos, nor our bodies, and certainly not an accumulation of all of our stories. We are much more than can be expressed in words. We are an infinite soul beyond the ideas of freedom and love. We are always, we are and always will be so much vaster than any story our egos could possibly invent. We will continue to exist long after this story has been forgotten by us in the world. Our being is naturally expansive and completely free. We have just been covering up our true infinite nature with stories. The tricky part in transcending any story is that our egos love the drama of an emotionally juicy adventure. It's like chocolate ice cream to a child. Our life's traumas and deep issues are so personal, wild and crazy, and feel so real that they often make us feel unique that we are even someone superior or special. And the truth is that everyone was born uniquely super special. And we all have the same core issues deep inside. These core issues about being in unloved, unwanted, abandoned, and unworthy. What a great recipe to instigate massive transformation in one's lifetime. Now, we may find ourselves sticking to these issues because the mind gets busy entertaining the victim story instead of being truly curious about recognizing our divine infinite nature. These personal issues can make up a major part of who we think we are. So to let go of them in many ways can feel like letting go of your entire identity. If we drop the story, we would have to do the scariest thing of all. We would need to totally reinvent ourselves. Maybe this isn't such a bad thing for this civilization. We could choose to only be loved, free, powerful, and without any limitations. Is this a challenge we would be willing to take on? Letting go of our story may feel like dying, yet in the end, there is no death without some kind of rebirth. So how does one truly transcend their story? Just watch it. Don't participate in it. Notice if you are focusing on what you want or don't want. See how present you are to the now moment or just reprogramming yourself with more illusions from your past. The experience that we have will always be created from our personal interpretation and universal perception. In the event we find that we are really stuck putting energy into how we aren't enough of this or that, or we may simply need some tools to shift our experience. Stop telling your story. When we hear 
ourselves telling somebody our famous story that makes us feel small, powerless, or less than divine, immediately stop yourself even if you're in a mid-sentence. As soon as you stop repeating your story, you stop giving it energy, and the story soon vanishes. Imagine a big red stop sign in front of you and simply stop the mouth from talking. Don't move a muscle. Be absolutely still and silent and investigate deeper inside to discover where this story is coming from and what this part of you actually is yearning to feel, be, do, or have. Become an archaeologist explorer and start digging. If you, if you are socializing while you are storytelling and you need some space to do the digging, gently remove yourself from the situation and go and sit in the bathroom and investigate the source of this saboteur. It is worth it. These stories can ruin our lives or transform them. If we take time to really look at our stories, we will discover what it takes to transcend them completely by simply seeing how our story is an illusion of the past and that the ego is stubborn holding on to. We are instantly free of it. Freedom, com freedom comes from finding the space between ourselves and our stories. When our story arises and we feel it pulling us in, imagine that we are taking five large steps back away from our story. Just as if we were stepping back from an angry person, growling dog, or some feisty child who has had too much sugar. Take one step, if you cannot take a large one, and with each step take a deep breath of air and become the observer. Look at your story like you were watching a movie or TV show. Recognize that it is just that, some drama being played over and over and over on your ego's video screen. Now that we are separate from the story, it is easier to see the truth of it and be free from it. When we identify the story that we are most attached to, the one that we repeat most often, each time we start repeating it, simply state one thing that you are grateful for instead. Refocus your mind on what is working in your life and what you are grateful for right now. There are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of things that we can be grateful for no matter where we are and no matter who we are. We can be grateful that the sun rose this morning to heal and heat our planet that we have clean drinking water, or that we are breathing with life in this moment instead of dying. The list goes on and on and on. Just look around at this world and notice the beauty, the detail, and the exquisite abundance. The more time we spend in gratitude, the faster our ego stories will die and become distant memories. When we are in a place of gratitude, we automatically send out positive energetic vibrations, which in turn magnetize to us the kind of positive uplifting things we want to manifest. Once we leave our story behind, we can see the truth of our existence and experience total freedom from our ego's suffering and limiting beliefs. This will help all of us be liberated once we choose to be.
All of us are a channel of abundance and prosperity. We're nothing more than that. That's, it's everything, every split second. And to realize that and to really bring it in, what do you think will happen on this planet when the majority of us understand this through the heart-mind? You think miracles are something? We'll be experiencing super miracles every split second across the planet. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. I'm sure we all are. And the first thing we care to do is relax our bodies. We are not the body. Period. We're not the body. We're not the name. We're not the personality, the character. We are the God within the body. So when your body is stressed, angry, fearful, you directly have the power to release all of that in a blink of the eye. And all, and all it is is just saying, I don't care to carry this anymore. And it, it will fade. But if you do it through the ego mind, it's not it's going to still hang there. So through your heart, through the love that you are, you intend it, and it drops off. All the stresses, fears, anxieties, it doesn't matter if you've been carrying them for several lifetimes or just in the, within the last hour. Only you can choose. Only you. Nobody else can for you. You can. So as you feel that body relax naturally, and all this stuff that you've been carrying and dragging around your, your ankle, this you know, ball and chain, some people have one on each ankle through life. You take the ball and chain off. Leave it behind. And I guarantee you the body becomes lighter. You have just a tremendous feeling of joy, bliss, happiness, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness. I overflows. And the body becomes just light, like a feather. And it's not thinking. And it's not angry. And it's not frustrated, worried, or fearful. It just is. And when that happens, you automatically are in the now. The now is all we have. We don't have tomorrow. Because we have no idea, no matter what our condition is, no matter what our health is, no matter you know, how phenomenally well-being we are, we don't know if we'll wake up the next morning. We just don't. It ain't a big deal. So in the past, why relive something over and over again that's long gone, dead, buried, gone, completely vaporized over? We all have memories, you know. We have uh, moments. We store all of our memories in our subconscious mind. That's our library. In fact, it's our library since we entered these bodies and all those around us when we were babies, we were in baby bodies, saying all this stuff. 
And of course, the baby body has a clue because it hasn't been you know, corrupted. It hasn't been influenced, manipulated, redirected, misdirected at all. In the now, we still the mind, the ego, the subconscious mind, which means they all go take a nap. And by us being in the body and seeing this, and watching and releasing, because it's about, it's about the body. You, the God within the body, are divine perfection. You're the only thing that doesn't change. The body's changing every split second, every microatomic second. You know, some of us, you know, we enjoy our memories. You know, a song can spark them or anything, and we visit them and we embrace them, and then we put them back up on the shelf. And some of us, though, will stay in that past so long, and that past is no different than an elephant graveyard. It's no different than a cemetery. Isn't anything moving, still, dank? All empty vessels, deader than a doornail. But some of us will stay there so long that we end up dragging that past into a future that doesn't exist, creating that future from that past and reliving that past in that future. A lot of people do it. And they're constantly asking themselves, it doesn't matter what we do, because we always seem to end up here. Now, some of us will go into a future that doesn't exist because we create our futures in the now. And we, we wander around asking ourselves, why hasn't this happened? Why is this happening to me? Why is that happening? I don't understand. How come I don't have this? And why don't I have that? And why is, why is this happening to me? What did I do wrong? What did I do to deserve this? You see how we can just immerse ourselves in the suffering? That's why the now is so powerful. How do we, how do we stay in the now? The space between heart base. The, 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 the moment to moment. Our breath. The breath is the now. It's the power. It's divine positive energy. Soul enters the body, powers everything up. Everything starts operating, functioning. Lungs produce oxygen. So the, the, the body sustains the soul through the breath. Try holding your breath, see how long you're going to last before you pass out. So we, we all grab on to thoughts that aren't ours. Tens of millions of program thoughts running through all of us, like just dozens of clouds passing by in the sky. So we're in the now. It's very easy for us to become not in the now because we're grabbing onto these thoughts and floating away constantly. So you... You only focus on the now, and when you are taken out, taken out of the now, you, it's very easy. Always be gentle, kind, generous, and humble to yourself. And then the deepest of gratitudes, 24-7. I can guarantee you, Every single time you find yourself floating out of the now, focus on your breath, in through the nose and out through the mouth, and you'll be automatically in, in, in the now. Three percent. Three thousand percent. A hundred thousand percent. You're in the now. And as you practice it more and more, it'll become automatic.
Now you look at these bodies. Look, yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, it's, I don't mean in the mirror. It's, it's different. You're looking at it from the God that you are within the body, right? And you can, you can get out. You can move outside the body and look around and above it and everything. And our ego minds, our heart minds, our higher self, our soul, our spirit. Our God, our pure consciousness, is all one. And the soul is the heaven, and the body is the earth. So our souls come into the body, heaven, on earth. And we know that every step we take, those of us who are consciously awake, the parts of us, parts of the collective consciousness that are consciously awake to a certain extent, know that every step we make, we create paradise on this planet. We also learn that we shine our light outward 360 degrees, and our light is the most omnipotent, powerful existence ever. It is the pure God force love light energy, and we flood the planet. We're, we're gods in, in bodies, heaven on earth, creating paradise, flooding the planet with our God force love light energy 24 7. So that means everyone, old life, highest supreme value in the universe, means everybody you meet, means every place you go, means if you're just sitting at home, you're flooding everything, always, and you're consciously aware of it. And when you understand that each of us that are in these bodies are all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, we're total eternal beings within these bodies. And if you were, you will, you'll have this chance, we all do, eventually, you go outside the planet, you look at this planet, this little blue marble, it's so brilliant with the light of eight billion gods that there isn't a sun combined in all existence that can compare to the brilliance of it. And it's really fun being awake. We've all been asleep, and we've all been awake. You ask yourself, I vote for awake all and every single moment. So when you look at the body, you see the lights, the wheels of light. They run through our tailbone to the top of our head. They're all different colors, really deep, vibrant, phenomenal colors. Not like here on this planet, but much more. They're etheric, they're spiritual planes, so they aren't solid. Okay? Nothing really is solid, but they, you can't pick them up. You, the God within that body, flows through those wheels of light. Some people call them chakras. Some people believe there's more. Others believe there's less. But we look at the seven from our tailbone to the top of our heads. This is where we flow as gods in these bodies. These energy vortexes, the chi, the power of the god within the body. So when we flow through them, we see things. We know. We know the body intimately. But when you're not connected with your God, you don't. So you look and you say, look at that. There's a, there's a red wheel of light on the tailbone of this body. And it, it's called Rucha. And it deals with the body's survival. And it is blocked by fear. So you, you imagine, you're, you're the God, right? you have divine, divine positive energy, your breath, you flow through this, 
and you hit all of the emotions, all the organs, all the tissues, everything that that body is, you flow through. The God that you are. So you get to take a bunch of us, put us out in the wilderness. We rely on each other to survive. You know, survival is shelter, food, clothing, water. And when any of us go into fear, panic, those are the ones that usually leave the body. Then we go to the orange chakra, orange wheel of light. This is our sacral chakra, and it deals with our pleasure, our joy, our sexuality, our fun. I mean, happiness, bliss, prosperity, abundance. I mean, it's absolutely astronomical. And we've all had these times where we're just, wow, this is phenomenal. Everything's just coming in. It's just falling into place. And you say to yourself, I, could, I can do no wrong. And we enjoy that. That's our natural state of being, even though we start becoming uncomfortable with our joy. Imagine that. And so the ego mind conjures up through the head to the and dictating to the heart mind. We get this little feeling that says, well, you know you can't do this forever. It just can't last forever. That's not logical. That's not possible. So you just might as well enjoy it while you can because it's going to end. See? And so since most of us are convinced of that, it ends because we feel guilty for deserving the best of everything. That's just, oh, that's wild. When it's our actual natural state of being. We move to the yellow wheel of light. Solar plexus chakra. Deals with our willpower. Blocked by shame, illusion. When we don't know who and what we are, that we have those illusions. Shame, guilt, fear. Then we move to the emerald green wheel of light, the heart chakra. This is our ability to love. And I'll tell you, when you're in grief, which is another illusion, you block love. And then we move to the blue wheel of light, the throat chakra. This deals with our truth, and it is blocked by our lies. And we move to the indigo wheel of light. You can see this as you're traveling through your body. The third eye chakra, which is our insight, and it is blocked by illusion. And then we move to the crown chakra. This is our direct connection to the divine. You. It is, your, it is the body's direct connection to the divine, you. The cosmic energy. And it is blocked by ego attachment. Now, we all sit on the top of the head of the body. Our God force, love, light, energy. Our divine positive energy breath. It's right at the top. We can hold that as long as we choose. We hold it. We are love. We are one. We are God. And then we compress and condense ourselves into pure liquid energy and we pour ourselves over our pineal, over the pineal glands in these bodies. Now, they're important to us. When they're happy, healthy, vibrant, high vibrational frequency, they connect us to all the particles of existence, everything, everything and everything, nothing and nothing, always and forever. This opens up every this opens up the gateway to all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. It means we connect to all the particles of the collective consciousness. All of those consciousness, pure consciousness, the divine God, the one. So they're very important to us while we're in these bodies. Now you can see you see through your heart mind's motion picture of which you're everything, director, producer, actor, actress choreographer. I see it as a green ball. 
rosebud. When I pour myself over the pineal gland, it automatically transforms instantaneously into a massive, fully bloomed rose, multicolored petals, and just a phenomenal fragrance. And it's sending off these shimmering waves that envelop me, embrace me, flood me, saturate me to my very core. This is spectacular. This is this is, is nirvana when you experience this. And you understand that you begin to not just feel but be the highest of the highest, highest, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. Gratitude and peace follows. Very intense, yet very loving, soft, and strong at the same time. And you discover that it is the reflection, the rose is the reflection of the God within that body. And the God in the body is the reflection of the rose. Now, we know to a certain extent that there are parts of us that are awake. We also know that there are parts of us that aren't awake. They're with us always, but they don't hear us yet. So we, we reach out to the parts of ourselves that are consciously aware to a certain extent. So like all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Yet only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitudes can be with us in this now, in this meditation, forming a circle of light and the complete liberation of this planet or the Gaia Arya in this now. Includes all the ones on this planet, Earth, uh, Gaia, Arya. Now, they come in the Googaplexes. One Googaplex fills this entire universe with not even a square inch of sacred space to spare. They come in trillions of Googaplexes from trillions of universes from every direction. And the ones on this planet, with our, the eyes we have with these bodies, we only see 1% of what is. Now, they come in shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations, of which we've never seen. And the ones that we're somewhat familiar with are fairies, sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur, and many, many, many more. And... They are with us now, consciously. We call upon all the galactics, off-worlders, all the celestials, yet only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, forming the circle of light and complete liberation of this planet. Now, we're only familiar with a smidgen of them. Over a thousand travel through the solar system every day. Over trillions throughout the universes every day. And the ones that we're somewhat familiar with, the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, the Feline, the Zeta Reticuli, the Nords, the Greys, the Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Avion, and many, many, many more. Now, they've been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. And they are with us now consciously. We call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, agartha, and beneath earth, yet only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, 
formula is sure blue light in the complete liberation of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. And they come into billions, and they are with us now consciously. We call upon all of our loved ones, all those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. Yet, only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, form the circle of light, the complete liberation of this planet. And they are with us now in the billions, consciously. All the archangels, all the cherubim, all the seraphim, all the archetypes, all the ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Christ, El Moria, Bandantia, Pell, Thoth, Yala, Yeshua, many, many, many more. But only those from each of them that are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and be with us in this now, in this meditation, form of this circle of light, complete liberation of this planet. Now, the archangels, they're a civilization that vibrated a different frequency than we do. We don't see them like we see each other. We can pass them. They can comment in a passing in the middle of the night on a dark street. Doesn't matter. You can meet them in person. You can talk with them. But they're like you. It doesn't dawn on us until we're, we're not talking with them that we were. And that's bliss. They have the same message. It's just delivered in a plethora of ways. And it, it just basically, isn't it absolutely magna glorious to be alive in these bodies, in this now? And that is bliss. They can surround any one of us at any one time in the tens of thousands. Because of their vibrational frequency, they can hold a large number in a small area. You want them to surround you? Ask. They will. More bliss. Ascended masters, they've mastered ascension into physical form, out of physical form, hold pure consciousness, God form. We are mastering physical form, are creating our experiences to perfect our creation. And some of us in this lifetime may just find out that we are the light that when you leave the body, you have no light to follow because you are the light. Now, we're all gathered arm in arm, hand in hand, in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, Abundance. And we're all one. And we're all love. And we're all God. And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. We immediately form a circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia Arya, and this now. This light emanates from the God Force Love Light energy within each and every one of us. This light is so bright that it would take a billion trillion suns to even come close to its brightness. And it is of the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. And we are flooding this planet. 
All of us conscious beings are flooding this planet in this very now with this love. We're flooding everyone, all of our brothers and sisters, whether they're awake or asleep, they're all part of us. All like the highest supreme value in the universe. Constantly increasing the vibrational frequencies of this planet. In life. Non-stop. It's eternal. That's why the transition is taking place. Whatever you choose to call it. Shift. Grand awakening. That's why it's happening. Because of all of us becoming more and more aware of who and what we are. And it's about time. We're a little late, but we're getting there. We immediately form this circle of light, and we begin to ascend. And as we ascend, we're immediately met with this massive ocean of glitter. It's everywhere, everywhere flashing trillions, uncountable numbers of light flashes back and forth between us all gathered here consciously. We zero in on the reflective points and we notice these little tiny microscopic catch mirrors. Perfect. We enter them and we discover that all of us throughout eternity are always teaching, learning, learning, teaching each other, ourselves always so no matter who walks into your life whether well, it's a passerby doesn't matter you're either learning or teaching them or yourself it's spectacular we're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael this is a column of light that we all created to remind us all that we are the power of healing. We are also met with the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is calm of light that we created that reminds us all of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We were then met with a white fire. This is a column of light that we all created to remind ourselves that we are imbued from head to toe with this omnipotently powerful white fire armor, way beyond armor as we know it, body armor and all of that. It emanates from the God force love light energy within each and every single one of us. It is pure, deep, eternal love. It is impenetrable by all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies. We are protected 24-7. Do you think we wouldn't be? The gods within these bodies protect the bodies. Why wouldn't they? So no demon attachments, no attachments. No possessions, no curses, no lower dark matter frequencies and lower survival matter frequencies. Because these, these lower dark matter frequencies, they, couldn't, they can't come close to us. They know it as long as we maintain our high vibrational frequencies. So we're always protected. Yet, only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough through hatred, fear, greed, anger, stress, anxiety, envy, hurry, you will create a breach in your white fire armor enough to allow all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Now, if you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with two columns of light. The first one is the purple transmitting flame. This is a column of light that we created to remind ourselves that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they're no more ever again. 
We're then met with the second column, the violet ray. This is a column of light that we created to remind ourselves that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. We can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our high vibrational harmony of the highest of the highest, high and deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. We are then met with the golden white pink light. This is the column of light that we created that reminds us all that we are the sun, the sunlight, the sun sets, the sun rises, the rain, the rainbows, the trees, the forests, the sky, the clouds, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams. We're everything. Everything is us. So the next time you see a sunset or a sunrise or a starry lit night sky or an ocean front or a mountain view, it is you. You're the beauty. You're the grandeur. You're the majesty. You're the divine perfection. All of us are. We always have been. We always will be ever beyond and forever. We continue to ascend above the planet. And some of us decide to step outside our physical form and hover effortlessly above it. If we're carrying physical form. And why do we do this? Well, because we can. We immediately come in contact with this massive crystalline light tower. We all created it. It's larger than the solar system. It's right in front of us, and this massive column in the center of it is this huge oblong sphere, and in the center of the sphere is this golden white bowl of light surrounded by numerous multicolored rings of light. And all of this is sending to all of us a constant stream of pure, deep, eternal love and gratitude and peace. And it it's absorbed, it surrounds us, it coats us, and it's constant. It is infinity. And the golden white bowl of light, the deepest, purest, eternal love. Then we have gratitude, peace, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, well-being, great wealth, great prosperity, great abundance. And then we discover that it is us, the God within us. It is a reflection of the gods that we are within these bodies. At the top of this column, we designed it so that the golden ocean can come cascading down, as it's doing right now, 24-7. This is deep, pure, eternal love, flooding all of us eternally, infinity, head to toe, inside and out, again, a reflection of the gods that we are within these bodies. We are drops of this golden ocean, and we also hold the essence of this golden ocean. Golden ocean is the drops, the drops are the golden ocean, and the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere. It's that center circle. We created this sphere over three and a half years ago. It holds over 1,500 of our meditations in perpetual motion. 1,500. Hundreds of millions of us on and off world gathered here every single day for over three and a half years. All with the highest of the deepest eternal intent that this planet and all its inhabitants move themselves into a higher frequencies and stay there and become aware of the gods that they always have been, always will be, ever beyond and forever. And that transition is in full swing. And the outcome is magna glorious. That's why this fear can be seen, heard, and felt, and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. 
And this is why it continues to intensify. And this is why it continues to expand. We are all the one. We are all the God, the God source, the pure consciousness. It is our choice to discover that we truly are the God. I'll join you in the meditation, and I'll return to close us out.
Take an easy breath in through the nose. An easy breath out through the mouth. Move easily and slowly. Everything we think, we create. Doesn't matter what it is. Every split second of our existence. It is always. It is perpetual. It is eternal. It's time for us as a collective to start realizing, those of us who are consciously aware to a certain extent, we are omnipotently powerful beings in these bodies. And as we wake up more and more, we become totally aware of our thought process and of who and what we are. We will manifest anything that we could possibly imagine and then some instantaneously. Take this with you for the rest of the day and to the evening and night and the following morning. We will be back here Wednesday, August 4th, 2021. 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call and 9 p.m. tomorrow, Wednesday, to continue our time for change call. 